with this being such a big shift going from GTK over to Qt, I'm assuming it hasn't been without its problems. I'm sure there have been some things which made more sense in GTK that did cause issues after you swapped. Things you do, relearn, new approaches, some, things like that. Some things are more straightforward in GTK. Uh, for example, mostly for lack of time to put the, the, the necessary energy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. splitting the graphical inter user interface from uh, the background you know, that applies the, the, the effect, you know, mm -hmm. we are essentially an application that pretends to be a service. This effect is not a really a service. It is just a, a graphical interface application that hides its interface and pretends to be a service running in the background because splitting the two things would make it will need will will require a communication between both sides that obviously is, is going to require a lot of effort mm -hmm. so doing that in gtk is a lot more straightforward they have a flag that you just set it and gtk takes care of the whole process of keeping the application running in the background and as well as uh, making sure you have only one instance of the application running, because this is important. It does mm -hmm. not make sense to have multiple instances of these effects running, because one instance will try to undo what was done by the other instance mm -hmm. that is running. And for some reason, Qt does not provide the JS out of the box. Mm -hmm. So I had to create my own solution to ensure that there is only one instance running, uh, my own solution to keep the process running once the window is closed. And so there, there are some small things here and there that are indeed uh, more straightforward when you use GTK. For example, the configuration framework that is the settings. Uh, for external projects to interact with us now, we will have, they will have to do this through a local server that I had to implement. So this is something that the sections naturally does on its own. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there's a performance price for that, but the truth is this is something you get for free when you are using GTK. It mm -hmm. is there, you use, uh, and when you are using Qt, you have to find your own way. So there's definitely some, definitely some things here and there that uh, are more straightforward when you are using GTK. Mm -hmm. It is a quite capable, a quite capable toolkit. It is more uh, the, the whole libid situation plus my personal preferences that when the application became too big, uh, I didn't like anymore some of the workflows that we need, but by no means it is a, a bad toolkit. It is quite capable. So I've got a bit of a cough right now. Um, I had to keep muting my mic. Um, <laughs> I I hope I haven't coughed into the mic. I, haven't, I hope you haven't heard that. Um, it like anyway. Uh, ignoring that. Moving on. Moving on from me <laughs> being sick for way too long. Anyway. Um. So you've mentioned a couple of times already how you're a physics professor you kind of expect the you should expect the kind of ui a physics professor is going to make it <laughs> like you said it yourself like <laughs> and i know and i know people have said oh the ui was bad before the ui is bad or worse now I did see that when you actually made the change, there were some KDE people that sort of jumped into the thread at the end to say, hey, if you want to get involved with UI discussion, stuff like that, have you gotten involved with that? Do you have some plans to, you know, further improve the UI for what EasyFX is doing right now? Yeah, I believe that for quite some time, we will have to focus on polishing the user interface. 
right now we are still in that moment where there is a flood of bug reports as well. You never have enough people testing, so <laughs> inevitably this will happen. There is one KDE developer that has provided some patch. I'm not sure for how long he will be able to keep that doing <laughs> that. Uh, but uh, some changes have already been made. Now. <laughs> He is looking at other things, and once things, things calm down a little, I will try to, to put some effort there in the interface, mm -hmm. uh, talk more to them. I talked a little to them in the Matrix channel, but there, there are more things that we'll have to, to look. Because just moving from one toolkit to another required a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. If along the way I would pay just try to pay attention to what is KDE Human Interface Guidelines saying. Uh, it, it would take forever. So first, let's make this work right. in another toolkit. Uh, now we can try to take a look at this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm still a physicist. So as long as my will is concerned, well, it works. <laughs> So uh, now is the time for people that has actually an experience with this, that works with this kind of thing to provide us at least some feedback about what has to be changed or not. Even, even then, it will, it will still be a challenge because mm -hmm. you definitely will not please everybody. Yeah, no matter uh, for what, example, it's a complex application. It's going to always be difficult to make perfect. Yes. Yeah, for example, uh, talking uh, again about our filters list in the, in the side panel. Mm -hmm. you, you, uh, we have the one bu button that enables or disables the effect, and another button that can delete, you know, remove this, this effect from the list. Mm -hmm. So. Thinking about these, these two buttons, mm -hmm. we have two big groups of users. One that always wants to see those buttons, and another group that do not want to see those buttons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't do both things at the same time. Either right. you show the buttons or you hide the buttons. So what we decided a few days ago was let's just put a configuration option if you do not want to see the buttons you have now the you're getting the KDE if you idea. want to see the button but you can't do that always right, there will right. be some cases where it will stay that way so that's the problem i i i know that some people consider these effects is uh interface clutter but the moment you try to hide something there's a group of people that come complaining that now they have to click more mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to do what they were able to do before. So there will have to be a compromise between clicking more or less. And I hope that people that actually work with graphical user interface will give some feedback because, well, otherwise it will stay <laughs> as it is. Yeah, that like. Is it. I have, um, I'm recording this with OBS right now, and OBS kind of has that same problem where it just does a lot of things, and you can't really hide that information without just making the application less useful. Blender has the same problem, Inkscape has the same problem, to some extent GIMP has the same problem. These are all really complex applications, and it's really difficult to provide everything a user wants to do and have that be clear without just putting everything inside of menus upon menus. And that's just annoying to use. Yes, that's a problem. In this case, it was one menu. <laughs> it was not nested menus. Uh, it was just one. And people, it was one extra click. That was enough mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to annoy some people. So. People want a beautiful interface, but at the same time, people do not want to click one extra time mm -hmm. to achieve the same feature. Uh, I don't know how, how to solve this. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea. 